What's up guys, my name is Ace, and something that a lot of people have been talking about since Warzone launched is skill-based matchmaking. When the game first launched, a lot of the content creators that attended the pre-release event for Warzone, they said that Infinity Ward told them there is going to be no skill-based matchmaking within Warzone. However, that didn't convince a lot of players, and there's been a lot of people, especially lately, claiming that there definitely is skill-based matchmaking within Warzone, or at least they feel like there's skill-based matchmaking within Warzone. So, I decided to put this to the test. I've been spending the past quite a few days now just grinding out all the data for this. It took quite a lot of time and effort to compile all of this, but I did want to answer the question, is there skill-based matchmaking within Warzone? And I didn't want to just base this video on feelings. I wanted the data and the evidence to back this up, and now I've got it. So let's go through my methodology and limitations and everything before we get into the results, because I feel that is very important when you're looking at data like this. What I did is I took four different accounts with varying skill levels. For my really high skill account, I used Karma's account because he's a Call of Duty professional player and he's got incredible stats within Warzone, so I decided to use him as my high skill player. Then I used my account mainly just because, of course, I'm going to use my account. It's my testing. I wanted to see what my account looked like in relation to this. Based on the stats that I've seen, my account would be considered well above average, but not like top level professional player, obviously, like Karma. Then I found an account that was basically bang on average, and then finally I have my dummy account that I often use for testing, and with this one I purposely played quite a few matches like a bot, like I just played horrible on purpose and just threw the games and just basically trashed the stats on that to see what it's like for a significantly below average player. Then with that, I used CodTracker.gg. It's a website that allows you to view quite a few stats. It actually pulls directly from the API. So they are accurate stats, and it allows you to see a lot more than the COD Companion app. This isn't sponsored by them or anything, but I will leave a link down below if you are just interested in checking that out. It's a really helpful tool for this. But with that, I pulled data on the most recent 100 players that I was able to collect data on for each of those accounts. Now keep in mind this does span over multiple matches for these accounts, simply because with COD Tracker I was unable to collect data on every single person in the lobbies. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get into limitations in a second here. But I should also mention that with all of these, crossplay was enabled, and I only pulled data from solo matches, because then things won't be skewed by having mixed skilled parties. So if you have a really skilled player and a really unskilled player in the same party together, that could really skew this data heavily, whereas in solos, it can't be skewed in that way. Now, the reason I focused on kill death ratio and score per minute is these stats, in Battle Royale at least, generally give you a pretty good indication of the skill level of a player. No matter how hard a really low skilled player tries, they're not going to be getting a consistent high kill death ratio. And same thing goes to some extent with score per minute. Even if you're trying to be hyper aggressive as a low skilled player, you're just going to get yourself killed more often and your score per minute is going to suffer for that. It's not going to improve if you're not able to consistently win your gunfights. So that's why I decided to focus on those two stats instead of like wins, for instance, because wins are often directly tied to just the amount of time that you have played. And also it could be easily skewed if you've got really good teammates that are carrying you a lot and you play trios. You could stack up a ton of wins while being a not very good player. So that's the methodology. Now I just want to really quickly touch on the limitations because it is important before we get into the results. I know you guys are waiting for that, but this stuff is really important to state beforehand. The first big limitation here that I kind of touched on earlier is I wasn't able to get data on every single player that I ran into. And the reason for this is with COD Tracker, it's unable to pull data on PC players for this. And it's also unable to pull data on anybody that changed their name with their Activision account. So that actually cut out a pretty good chunk of players that I was unable to get any data on. And this is something I'm going to circle back to when I'm looking at the results. So just remember that I said this because it is important later on. Additionally, this testing that I did has a pretty limited scope. It's just focusing on solos. I don't know what happens when you have parties together and you mix up different skill levels. Like if a high skill player joins on his low skill friend, I don't know what's going to happen to their lobbies. And that's just outside of the scope of this. If I included that testing as well, I probably just wouldn't have gotten around to doing this in the first place. So we're just looking at solos here. And then finally, another limitation is the sample size could be better. I'll be the first to admit this isn't a perfect scientific study by any means, but I still feel this data is quite important and it does paint a pretty good picture of what's going on when it comes to skill-based matchmaking in Warzone. So with that, finally we can move into the results here. Let's start it off with kill death ratio. For the high skill account, which is Karma's account, he has a kill death ratio in Battle Royale of 4.63, which is absolutely insane. That is definitely top 1% in the entire world. 
Then on my account, I've got a 2.06 kill death ratio, which is still well above average, but not quite top 1%. It's more like top 10%. Then for my average account, I just happened to find a random account that had basically perfectly average stats when it came to both kill death ratio and score per minute. So this account is Joe Montana and with this his kill death ratio is 1.1. And then finally for my dummy account, which is called exclusive, this one has a kill death ratio of 0.7 in Battle Royale. Now when we look at the average kill death ratios for the enemies for each of these accounts out of 100 players, we can see with Karma's account, it's 1.2, which is noticeably above average. And it was very similar for my account as well. It was 1.18. With Joe Montana, my average account, the average kill death ratio was literally right at one. And then finally with my dummy account, the enemy average kill death ratio was 0.67, which is very similar to the kill death ratio on that account. So already just looking at this right here, you can see a pretty clear trend. And if we bring up the histograms for this as well, you can really see how everything's distributed. Keep in mind, I did eliminate a couple outliers on both Karma's account and my account that are significantly to the right side of the graph. Just to clean things up and keep things consistent so you can compare perfectly across the different accounts here. And you can see with Karma's account as well as my account, our lobbies are actually quite similar, even though his kill-death ratio is quite a bit better than mine. Then with Joe Montana's account, we've got a pretty good distribution right around that average point, although it does skew very slightly to the left. And then finally, on my dummy account, this is very heavily skewed towards the below average side of kill-death ratio. It's actually worth noting that on this account, out of 100 players, only 7 of those players had a kill-death ratio over 1. And the ones that did were just barely over one. So it already looks like a pretty clear trend here, but let's have a look at score per minute as well to see if there's some correlation here. And here are the results for the different accounts. Keep in mind, according to COD Tracker, at least the average score per minute in Warzone is 165. So Joe Montana sits basically right on average again. My account is well above average. And then Karma's account is top 1% here. And then when it comes to my dummy account, it is worth noting that I did play on this a little bit on stream before I decided to do any testing with skill-based matchmaking. So I was playing normally, and therefore I actually had a pretty good score per minute at the time. So when I started doing my basically reverse boosting with that account where I was playing horrible on purpose, I did manage to bring my overall account score per minute down significantly, but it's still at like 150-ish, even after I was trashing the stats. So what I did here is I decided to show my score per minute for the past five games that I played before I started collecting the data here, and this was just 56, which is very, very low. So with this, once again, we see a very comparable trend to the kill-death ratio trend. It appears the lobbies that Karma and I get into are pretty much the same lobbies. We've got a very comparable score per minute average in our lobbies. Then Joe Montana's average lobby actually has a below average score per minute, which is interesting. And then finally, for my dummy account, the enemy score per minute average is incredibly low at 87. Now, I also want to show off the histograms for score per minute, just like I did with kill death ratio. And we see basically the same story here where Karma and I have a pretty normal distribution with the average being just a little bit above the average score per minute overall. Then Joe Montana, again, pretty normal distribution, but skewed a little bit towards the below average side. And then finally, for my dummy account, the distribution sits way over on the left side. And it's worth noting here that not a single player out of 100 had a score per minute that is above average. So those are the results. And of course, if you guys want to see the raw data, I will leave a link to my spreadsheet down below where I collected all that data. Now, I just want to mention a few other observations that I noticed while I was collecting this data. First off, like I said earlier, I was unable to get any data on PC players as well as accounts that have changed their name through the Activision account. And I found it quite interesting that there were a ton of PC players in both Karma's lobbies as well as the lobbies on my main account. Whereas on the other end of that, on my dummy account, there were almost no PC players at all in these lobbies. And it was actually a pretty similar story with the number of people that had names that had changed and therefore I couldn't get data on that. There were far more people that had these changed names in the lobbies of Karma as well as myself compared to the lower skilled accounts. That does seem to make sense, especially with the name changes. Usually people that take the game more seriously, they'll be more likely to actively go in there and change their name. Whereas the more casual players, a lot of them probably don't even realize that you can do that or they just don't care. So I suspect if I was able to get data on literally every single player, we would likely be seeing the stats on both Karma's account as well as my account 
skewed a little bit further to the right because I essentially had to eliminate a big chunk of the player base and that particular chunk of the player base tends to lean more towards the above average side. Like if you just think about it, all of the top players that I can think of at least, they've changed their name within Modern Warfare. They're not using their actual PSN or their actual Xbox Live name. So I do suspect that that would be skewed even more to the right for Karma's lobbies as well as my own. Another big thing I noticed while collecting this data is many of the players I was running into on my dummy account were free to play players. So they had literally no stats collected for multiplayer whatsoever. They had only played the Battle Royale in the game. Whereas that seemed to be very, very rare in the lobbies of Karma as well as myself. So in conclusion to this, is there actually skill-based matchmaking within Warzone? Yes, it looks like there very clearly is some form of skill-based matchmaking there. And to top that off, it doesn't appear that this is just a protected bracket for like the really, really low skill players like my dummy account, for instance, because we also see a difference between the average player and the above average players. Now, how strict is this skill based matchmaking? Well, I will say that it's definitely quite noticeable because the average player that Karma and I will run into, they will be an above average player, and there are very few below average players in our lobby. So most of the people that we run into, they're at least going to be decent at the game. They know what's going on, they know how to get around the map, they know how to win gunfights. They might not all be like the top 5% in the world or anything, like some people seem to be suggesting. I've seen a lot of people exaggerate this a little bit and say that literally every single person in my lobby is a sweaty MLG tryhard jump shotting and drop shotting and stuff. Based on this data, even if you are one of the best players in the world like Karma, there will still be players that are around the realm of average within your lobbies and there's going to be quite a few of them. It's just generally speaking, overall, it's going to be above average. Whereas on the other extreme, when you look at my dummy account, almost every single player for that account is going to be below average, and most of them are significantly below average. And the difference in these lobbies is night and day. So yes, there is skill-based matchmaking. Yes, it is very noticeable as well. So the logical conclusion to this is either Infinity Ward straight up lied to the content creators at that event, or I think there might also be a possibility that Infinity Ward really did think there would be no skill-based matchmaking and Activision decided to throw it in there anyways. Now, the reason I think it might end up being the latter here is from a tweet from Michael Condry that we actually got a few days ago that seems to strongly imply that the studios themselves have almost no input when it comes to skill-based matchmaking and that that's basically entirely decided by Activision. So perhaps at that pre-release event, which was like a month before Warzone actually launched, perhaps at that time, Infinity Ward really did think there would be no skill-based matchmaking, and then Activision pulled a fast one on them and decided to add it before the game went live. Either that, or there's definitely the possibility there that they did just straight up lie and think that we wouldn't catch on to this. But in either case, based on this data, skill-based matchmaking is absolutely within Warzone. And something I did forget to mention as well is it does appear that this is kind of similar to multiplayer in the sense that it seems to be performance based. I noticed this as I was kind of reverse boosting my dummy account. Since I had played normally with it and had pretty decent stats initially, my lobbies were pretty much the same as my main account. But as I was throwing these games continually, things progressively got easier and easier and easier until it got to the point where it was almost difficult to get killed by the enemy players. So I strongly suspect that this skill-based matchmaking is more like the performance-based matchmaking algorithm where it takes your recent performance from X number of matches. I don't know the number. Could be 3, could be 5, could be 10. I really don't know what that number is, but it seems to take your recent performance and it uses that as a baseline to determine which skill bracket you're going to be placed into. Now, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video. I didn't really want to get too heavily into my opinion on skill-based matchmaking within Warzone, at least not in this video, but if you guys are really interested in hearing my thoughts and stuff on that, I am willing to make a separate video where I can just basically rant and share all my opinions and everything on this skill-based matchmaking. But for today's video, at least, I wanted the main focus to just be on the numbers and the conclusions that we can draw from those numbers, and I wanted to generally keep my opinion out of things. But with that, I would like to know in the comment section below, first off, what do you guys think about these results? Were you surprised at all to see that skill-based matchmaking is in fact within Warzone? 
And also, now that we know that it's there, what do you guys think about skill-based matchmaking in Warzone? Do you think it should be there? Do you think it should be as strict as it currently is? Or do you think it should be completely eliminated or at the very least toned down? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time. Going back to the front line. Burn it.